G'day! Hello, hello. Welcome back to Luke's Way of Looking. Today we are not working on orcs. If you follow my social media, you may already know about this project, but basically I just wanted to take a break from 3D modeling and do a bit of kit bashing. The reason this project came about was I was having a look at Space Marine Combat Patrol boxes and didn't come across any that I was particularly interested in so I set myself the challenge to build my own Combat Patrol with the same budget or less than the price of a normal Combat Patrol but do it in a way that leaves me with a very unique looking army. So anyway, this is going to be my video documenting my process for converting some Stormcast Eternals into Space Marines. I hope you enjoy it. Don't get too angry at me about law related things. I'm just doing what I think looks cool. And let's jump into the video. Alrighty, let's kick off this conversion by turning all of our liberators into assault intercessors. The Thundersight Brotherhood kit comes with 10 liberators, including two liberator primes, which will become assault intercessor sergeants, which will make two squads of assault intercessors. First step in this conversion is to remove all the parts necessary to build a liberator from the sprue and assemble it to the point where it doesn't have a head or the left arm with the shield. I'm going to remove any remaining sprue tabs and mold lines with my hobby knife. I also like to use a old toothbrush to clean plastic debris off my models. Now that we've got all of our liberators assembled to this point, the next step is going to be converting their hammers into a kind of chain spear thing. This is completely personal choice. I just thought it would look cool with a bit of a longer handle. The bonus is we get a little bit more meat to drill into for pinning. So we want to file the connection point nice and flat and now we can do some work on our chain sword. The idea here is to cut just above the hand, leaving the blade of the chain sword and filing a flat surface ready to mate up to the handle on the liberator. Now that the handles and chain sword blades are both prepped, next step is to drill some holes. You want to make sure that your holes are in the center of both the handle and the blade but they only need to go about one or two mil deep. You also wanna try and make sure that when you're drilling, you're going in straight relative to the part so that you don't accidentally blow out the side. Next step is to pin them. I'm using paperclip wire because I'm impatient and it works, so I'm not sorry about it. You want to put a small dab of super glue on one end. You can then place the wire into the hole of either part. Once it's dried, you can trim it back to roughly the depth that you drilled. Add some more glue and attach the second part. So there you go, that's how I handled the chain swords for my assault intercessors. I ended up using the blades from the death company kit for one squad and the blades from the space wolves kit for another squad so I could tell them apart. The next step in the conversion is to add some space marine heads. The first issue that I ran into while trying to fit new heads to these liberators is this front collar section. So I trimmed that down a bit and that improved the fitment. I basically just cooled it good enough at this point and glued the heads in. Probably could have used some green stuff to improve the fit even more, 
but keep in mind this is my first real conversion project so I was learning it as I was going. The next part of this conversion is the bolt pistols for the most part. This is pretty straightforward. I just cut the pistol arm along the elbow plate ridge and the fitment ends up being pretty good. I'll probably come back a little bit later with some green stuff just to hide that gap on the inside of the elbow joint. But other than that, it's looking pretty good so far. Up next, we want to add the power pack. And the back of these big Liberator shoulder pads interferes with the fitment of the power packs a little bit. So I'm just gonna cut the corners off and file down a flat spot for the power pack to attach to. All of this will be covered up by the power pack itself so you won't see any of these missing corners. I also found an ingenious use for the discarded bits of hammer that we cut off earlier. They make great spaces when cut down so that the power pack sits off the back of the model a little bit the same way it would on a normal Space Marine. So there you go. That's the process for converting the Assault Intercessors from Liberators. Not that much to it, bit of pinning, bit of trimming. I also removed all of the Edge of Sigma iconography except for the lightning bolts because they work with my white scars. You could really take this conversion as far as you want to. You could change the shoulder pads, the chest. I kept it pretty simple just because I like the way that they look. With that being said, let's move on to our Assault Intercessor Sergeants. It's much the same process as the Assault Intercessors. We're cutting out parts to assemble the Liberator Prime, cleaning them up a bit, removing the sprue tabs and mold lines, and scraping off any Age of Sigma iconography. Due to the way that this part is cast, I am going to have to cut off the head here to make way for our new Space Marine head. I am trying to preserve as much of the collar at the back as I can, however it's likely I will have to trim it down anyway for the fitment of the head. For this model I decided to leave the lion head pauldron, I think it will look really cool painted up nice shiny gold on a sergeant in particular. Again, the rule of cool wins out here. We've got our Liberator Prime assembled to this point and now I want to add a power fist. One of my sergeants will have a power fist as the melee weapon and the other sergeant will just have a chain sword. This step worked out incredibly well. I cut at the same point the ridge on the elbow armor I also managed to keep the tubing on the power fist and the fitment is really really good. Unfortunately I don't have any more footage of the conversion for this particular sergeant. So here he is with a head and a plasma pistol. This is probably one of my favourite models from the entire conversion. I love how everything turned out. Moving on now to intercessor sergeant number two. We're going to follow a pretty similar process to the Assault Intercessors. This hammer is going to become a chain spear type thing and the offhand will get a plasma pistol as opposed to a heavy bolt pistol. I also had this spare blade guard forearm plate which I decided to attach to the sergeant just to bulk up this area. Yes, I did cut my thumb and yes, it was from this conversion. It's an optional step, you don't have to follow. Again, I'm pretty happy with how this sergeant turned out. He definitely looks similar to the other sergeant but different enough to look like he's leading a different squad. 
Alrighty, let's continue on. Time for some inceptors. We're going to be using the prosecutors for this conversion. So let's get those cut out and half assembled and see how we're going to incorporate these wings. Here you can see I've performed my normal steps of removing the Age of Sigma stuff. Now we're going to go through all of our remaining plasma weaponry in the kits that we've bought to see what we want to use to convey our plasma exterminators. I'm going to have to apologize, I don't have that much footage from the Inceptus conversion, but I do have this couple of little clips showing how I scooped out the arm bracer and attached the plasma pistol there. I basically did a plasma pistol and a plasma rifle for the two inceptors and then the inceptor sergeant I had to use two plasma pistols. Um, that's just what I had left but I did use this cool hand bionic hand from the death company kit to make it a bit more interesting for the sergeant. I was also kind of running out of heads at this point. Um, in this photo I have the beaky helmets there. I ended up using those for the blade guard instead. I used a couple of unhelmeted heads for the inceptors and for the inceptor sergeant I actually ended up keeping the prosecutor head kind of reminds me of some Mongolian helmets I've seen, so I'm stretching my rules a little bit, but I still think it looks pretty cool, so rule of cool wins again. I've also attached the jump packs from the death company kit to the backs of the prosecutors using similar techniques to the power packs with the assault intercessors. Now I just have to figure out a way to incorporate the wings because I still want to use them instead of just discarding them or using them on a different project. After trialing a few different ideas, I decided not to attach the whole wings to the inceptors and instead trimmed them down and used them as a type of decorative piece. You can see in these photos of the completed models that I also used some cables from power hammers and things to further try and convey the idea of plasma exterminators. We still have a few more units to convert. So next up, we've got our blade guard. We're gonna use the retributors as the basis for this conversion. Again, cut them out, clean them up. Gonna get them all to about this point. You can see that by cutting off the head, we have quite an unsightly gap between the two halves of the collar, the back and the front there. So we're just going to cut the front collar off completely. We're also going to remove the lunar symbol boss that sits underneath the left pauldron there. We'll replace it with something else in a bit. Next up, we've got some pinning to do again. My plan is to use power swords found in the Space Wolves and Death Company kits. And we're going to use the blades from these swords to convert the lightning hammers into spears, which I think is going to suit our White Scar's blade guard quite nicely. After racking my brain trying to figure out what I was going to use as shields, did I want to use bucklers? Did I want to run no shields at all? Did I want to use the shields from the liberators? I finally came up with an idea that I thought was quite interesting, a little bit outside the box. 
you guys might think it's super lame, but I'm actually going to use these circles that are in the center of all the sprue trees. They don't look like very much to start off with, but once you clean them up a bit and add a little bit of decorative spice, they make quite convincing small round shields. At least I think so. Once I had started looking at sprue, I also came up with an idea to use for the small round bosses. To replace the lunar bosses, I used the circles that have the letters combined with the backpack tabs to make some little bosses which I also used on the shields. You can see in these pictures that I have the blade guard sergeant holding his shield and the other two blade guard have their shields mounted on their backpacks. I also retained the top detail of the original Retributor backpacks and mounted them on top of the power packs. Okay, so we only have two models left in this conversion. They're both character models. It is the Blade Guard Ancient and the Chaplain on Bike. I'm going to be using the Lord Relictor and Lord Celestant for those two conversions. I kind of worked on these two conversions simultaneously as I wanted to use the scroll cape from the Lord Relictor on my chaplain and I wanted to use the cape that's on the Lord Celestant on my Relictor. Also pretty obvious I'm going to be using the Relictor head on the chaplain. So with all the parts cut out we can start thinking about how we want this all to fit together. Also, now I have fake tan on my hands, as well as band-aids. Yay for retail. Okay, so unfortunately a lot has happened off screen here, but I'll try to go through what I've done. I have taken the bolt rifle from the Death Company kit that has a strap, and I have carefully cut away the hand from the bolt rifle and attached it to the Lord Relictor in place of his hammer. All right, so now we're starting to work on this cape and here's the cape from the Lord Celestin. I want to trim away the lower half of the cape and keep the upper half so that I can still assemble the Lord Celestin as normal. Ended up using that hacksaw blade that I was showing earlier and I cut off the cape using those holes that I drilled as a guide and it turned out incredible. <laughs> I really lucked out here the cloth moves the right way and the backpack almost covers the gaps left when I attach the cloak and the rest of those gaps I'll just fill with a bit of green stuff at the end. You can see I also added one of those little bosses similar to the blade guard veterans. Okay, last model in this kit is the Lord Celestin on Dracoth, which we'll be converting into a chaplain on bike, taking a little bit of artistic liberty here as we have been throughout the whole project. So we will cut out and assemble the Lord Celestin on Dracoth, except now we'll be using the Lord Relictor head and we will also be using the Lord Relictor cape. Now there is quite a bit of iconography that needs to be scraped off on this model. Thankfully they put it on nice big flat panels. Makes it nice and easy for me. You can see the model is mostly cleaned up and mostly assembled. So you can see here that I have roughly positioned the cape from the Relictor using some blue tack in the orientation that I want it to flow. I've also converted the hammer into a halberd using parts from a power axe and thunder hammer. I also added a huge plume on top of the Relictor head. This may be a controversial choice but I think it looks really cool. The only real conversion I have left for this model is to figure out how I want to represent the twin barrel guns that are normally on a Raider pattern bike. 
So what I've opted to do is to use two storm bolters on either side, cut down so that they fit flush with the armor panels. And also I have two under armor shoulder pads mounted above them. When I fill in the gaps in between those two pieces with green stuff, it will look like it's on a articulated arm. You can see I have also created a absolver bolt pistol that I've got resting on the armor panel there and I've used some of the other components from the kits that I bought to represent books and scrolls for this chaplain. Just to show you what I was talking about in regards to the articulated gun arms, you can see in this footage here how I've filled in the gap between the guns and the shoulder pads and now it looks more like a cohesive mounting system for the weapons. There it is guys, that's my completed Stormcast Eternals to White Scars conversion using the Thunderstrike Brotherhood kit, the Death Company kit and the Space Wolves Grey Hunters kit. Came in under budget. It's definitely a unique looking army and I had a lot of fun doing it. Now I think it's important to note that I did make a lot of mistakes during this conversion. There is a lot of things that I would have done differently. I'm quite aware that these Space Marines are not very lore accurate, um, even towards White Scars. I just thought that the armor looked cool. There are some lightning bolt motifs, which does lend itself well to White Scars. You know, you have the ancient Mongolian inspiration coming in a little bit. There's definitely a lot of artistic liberties that I have taken here. But I just went with what I thought looked cool and what was within the scope of my skills. I definitely want to do more conversions in the future, so let me know if you would like to see more of that. And also, feel free to let me know how you would have handled this conversion. You know, there's a lot of lion motifs in the Stormcast that could have lent itself quite well to Dark Angels. There's also a lot of scaled beasts and hammer motifs which could have lent itself quite well to salamanders. So let me hear your thoughts on this conversion and the idea of converting Stormcast Eternals into Primaris in general. As usual, uh, all the links to my socials are in the description of this video. The next video out will be Orc Services resumed as normal. And as always, a massive thank you to all my patrons. If you'd like to become a patron and get early access to my STL pack releases or just to support the channel, check it out in the link in the description. And lastly, I just wanted to say that I have been doing some video game streams over on Twitch. I'm streaming my first playthrough of Bloodborne right now, which is a awesome game. So if you wanna watch me get absolutely shit on in Bloodborne, you can check out my Twitch streams via the link in the description, or you can check out my second channel where I am just archiving my VODs at the moment. Thanks again for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.